And there we go, game three now. We are live. We did see a hatch first opening here by Nurture. And on the other hand, we see two racks opening here by, by Unix. As Unix actually lifting off this racks and, and landing it here. So he is going to hope to be aggressive with a lot of Marines here early on of Secure's Plateau. So Nurture here uh, is, is going to have to fend off the aggression here. Several SCVs being pulled with this as well. Unix uh, pulling a bit of a uh, bit by bit. Trying to make something happen. But look at that spine crawler at the front of Nurture. With the, the, the drone, sees the front, knows exactly what is up. He's gonna defend against this as, as well as he can. He's gonna just delay until the spine crawler comes up. There we go, the spine crawler now up. Spine crawler very hard to take out with Marines. And oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. There's a bunker going down as well, but at the same time, there we go. There's a bunker going down, but oh, the Marines now under fire. Is V trying to make something happen, but really not able to? It seems like the, the aggressive opening from Unix really has failed. Bunker now getting taken down. That uh, that was all she wrote by this very aggressive opening. Then again, you know, this is, does not mean that either player is out yet. We do see the expansion now going down for Unix. I mean, well, of course, he's you know he forced Nurture to get a lot of Zerklings out early, so Nurture is not in the greatest economic situation as well. We've got 20, well, 20 drones right now, seeming Nurture has been power droning. And Baneling's coming on out. Oh man, Baneling's so good against this two racks opening because you're gonna have a lot of bio out early. But he's losing a lot of these Zerklings right now to the Marines. Really not what you want to have happen. You want to save your Zerklings uh, and you know, only engage when you know you've got the upper hand until you get, uh, get that Baneling nest done. A wall being created of pure racks just to defend this. First of all, we can say this is a very strong, strong wall. I think there's, is there an opening here? There should be an opening here. We'll see next time a unit pops out. <laughs> but they're very hard to take down with Bailings. Of course, when you're considering the much, uh, much weaker, much weaker supply depot wall. At the same time, Nurture is just comfortably power droning. He doesn't feel like he has a, a need to aggress at all. Zergling now we're gonna check the front. Actually gonna intercept some of these reinforcements. That is very good ply. Yep, there we go. Nice little gap there at the bottom. <laughs> Unix not too happy about that. Like, oh, oops. Forget about that one. Zergling's now into his main and a little bit of a smiley face by Nurture. He's like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm just gonna real quick, yeah. He's cleaning this up very, very nicely though. Still, nice damage being done. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that Nurture didn't like try to hide two Zerglings here somewhere and morph them into Bailings. There we go. Now he fixes, uh, fixes the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a whoops. What is the lair here going down? Evolution chamber coming up as well as the Roach one. Roach one in front actually. Just uh, you know, must have a bit of a tighter choker at front. Call it a Zerg wall in, so to speak. You said the two racks, uh, two factor is uh, is being put down. He's got one tech lab going up. The other one's sitting still idle for now. I wonder what, what's, what he wants to do. Yeah, Hellions, gotta be Hellions. And uh, the pre unit, of course. I guess he really couldn't uh, afford the reactor here. Can Zerklings just, uh, just sneaky on in? <laughs> Unix apparently doesn't know how this wall is. Uh, finally, he gets the wall right. Now the wall is tight. <laughs> Nurture with the, with the perfect answer. It's made from imbalance. You know, the third going up here for Nurture. For that second time, the wall, uh, yeah, the wall being open. And it's just like, no, I know, I know Russia. We're gonna attack the Brute Lords. Oh, he's calling a spy. He's got the lair down, he could go for it. He's got that infestation pit going down as well. Uh, sending his drones uh, to, to his third. The main transfer going down. Now, of course, if you call a play like that, you know, the, the gutsy thing is actually do it. We'll see if Nurture opts for it. We do see that the pathogen glands are being researched right now. 
Once I get that extra energy on the infestors at. Roach speed going down as well. Has he gotten bailing speed yet? That's, uh, that's what I'm curious about. No, no centrifugal hooks yet. I didn't see it in the tab, so I was curious. Loses a few zerglings in the middle of the map. <laughs> Unix is going to try to be aggressive here. Should be able to take down the queen, but there we go. The roach is out to defend. There's 10 roaches out. They're just uh, in a bit of an awkward position right now. He's going to lose the queen there. And again, you should have enough roaches to actually deal with this. There we go. Now pulling them all in. On creep so fast. And the uh, roach speed now done as well. Oh, the Hellion is just trying to sneak in. Trying to get something done in this third. But really, more than scouting, you won't be able to do. Oh, just kill one. And there we go. The Hellion is now cleaned up. Meanwhile, these roaches are actually picking off a lot of these marines on their way back, and the wall is reinstated. There we go. The Thor now out. He's going to high tech. He's got melee, melee attack level 2 being researched. Well, we're going to likely at least see cracklings, but there's the Spire going down. Is Nurcio calling his shot here? Is Nurcio actually going to go for the high tech? And, and gonna go for that greater spire. The scan is going down like right. He's, he's seeing the spire. He's probably like, oh my god, is he actually gonna do it? Of course, the problem with that is, is even if Unix knows it's coming, what can he really do? Well, he can get a significant amount of Thors out. That is what he is doing. And there we go. <laughs> the double star where he's like, oh my god, I'm just gonna get a lot of Vikings that, you know, at least I'm gonna force him to do something else than the, the play he's calling. This game suddenly turns, you know, it turns purely about, uh, <laughs> it suddenly turns into purely just uh, being about saving his uh, saving his, his skin. <laughs> You're just like saying, oh, okay, well, I'm going to vote for Cass and the TT Captain instead. I do you see the fourth now going out for Nurture? His spire is almost done. Are we going to see it? Is Nurcio going to call a shot? Look at that. Mass Overseer. It says 20 minute no attack and there we go. Oh my god. Nurcio stepping up to the plate. Calling a shot. He knows exactly what he's going to go for. Let's see what these overseers are going to do. <laughs> oh, the little bit of harassment is going to cost them considerably. Poor overseers. They should have done this a little later. Honestly, you should have used these to trap the, the Vikings uh, as soon as you had the corruptors out. So now the corruptors are out. Could have picked off a free, a few free, a uh, few, bleh, few, few free Vikings. There we go. God, oh, it's so hard to pronounce. <laughs> Roaches, zerklings, and uh, the infestors there to back them up. Now knock, knock, knocking on Unix's door. The wall under fire. Not able to defend. There we go. The season are now going up a little too late. The wall is down, he is moving in. He's content just, oh my god, the Infestitarian is popping up everywhere right now. These Corruptors are, are mostly used to just corruption being spammed everywhere. He's got the Greater Spire done, but really uh, not in a position to utilize quite yet. Oh, well, we did see him do some significant damage, but mostly it's just, you know, this is not this is not at all about doing damage to the infrastructure of, of Unix. He just wants to trade as much army as he can. And there we go. Oh my god. The Broodlord Cocoon. We're going to see Broodlords, guys. Nurcio is calling it. And now the interesting thing is, of course, Unix has been plenty able to pre prepare for this. He's not trying to expand to his third. Third's getting taken down. 
and the fleet of broods now making their way in. Uh, the Vikings are doing considerable damage at least. The, the, the. There's a the big engagement right now. The Roach is now going after these these Thors. The Thors dwindling into nothing this very quickly. This problem is the Corruptor count is very low. The Corruptors are going to go down. That is going to expose his brute lords as well. How much damage can he do in the meanwhile though? Well, considerable damage. But now he is forced to back out. Needs more Corruptors out there. And a nice fungal there. Yeah, there's the nice fungal onto the Vikings. Clutch play there by Nurcio to actually keep his uh, to keep his brute lords alive. And Broods are known as the GG unit. Once they come out, it's uh, it's very tough to hold off. But nope, Nurcio, <laughs> Unix says, hey, no, no more, no more of this. I'm going to GG out. Nurcio is going to progress with a 2-1 uh, two victory here over Unix. Very well played there. Called his shot and made it happen. This guy's got game, man. Nurcio is going to move on to the, the finals. Meanwhile, in the, other, um, in the quarterfinals, we did see that Strelok was still playing Stefano. That is 2-1 for Stefano, actually. Stefano taking out Straylock. So we're going to see Tef Stefano play... Um, God, who is the other the other person that made it into the semi? Satini, of course. So Stefano against Satini is going on in the other semifinal. And we are going to be uh, shortly delayed, seeming to st the other semifinal has not yet started. Stefano's match uh, against Nurcio is going to happen in GoFor SC2 first. So, you know, by all means, switch streams uh, to that briefly. And we'll be back as soon as that match finishes with uh, more semi-final action. So uh, stay tuned. Of course, I am Marta and AK Mumbles, known from JLHF.TV and the Lowland Lions. You know, we're live here from the Chaos TV studio. I hope you guys are having a good time enjoying the coverage so far. We'll be back soon with more action.